presented as a referral from Tuangwa Hospital with a, a two weeks, a two months history of uh, fever and swelling of the lower limbs. Uh, the fever was of gradual onset, intermittent, and low grade, mainly occurred in the evenings. And the mother notices uh, this fever after bathing the child. Uh, on the mother knows that the fever was relieved by paracetamol. Uh, the fever was associated with conversion, and yet one episode of conversion, which occurred about uh, two to three minutes, and which was followed with a tonic, uh, it was tonic chronic, uh, and accompanied with uh, loss of consciousness. Uh, there was no reported history of uh, vomiting, projectile, or, well, there was no reported history of, of conversion or vomiting. Uh, there was an occasional reported history of headaches, uh, but there was no associated uh, visual impairment. Now, on the lower limb swelling, uh, it's reported that uh, the child had a swelling which started with uh, lower limbs uh, with pain on the left leg, which followed a month later, the bilateral swelling which began, uh, began progressively from the uh, from the up to began progressively from down going up, uh, I think from the pedal area progressing upward. Uh, the mother also reports that she noticed that the, the child's heart was beating faster, uh, more noticed on the left side of the chest. Uh, however, there was no shared difficulty in breathing, no chest pain, or is a particular ability. The cough which was presenting alongside was managed with a uh, thromycin which resolved. In the review of other systems, the remarkable finding was on ENT, where he had a uh, mother reports that the child had uh, passed discharge from the ears for about four years and he had been attending the ENT clinic in Malawi. Uh, there was no shared difficulty in swallowing or, or, or pain. Uh, in the other system, the GIT was unremarkable, the other system was unremarkable, and the skin findings also was unremarkable. Uh, on past medical, uh, past medical history, uh, apparently the child had never had uh, any admission until this previous one where they presented at a uh, Congo and then they were referred to uh, Mulago. Uh, there's a positive family history of sickle cell in the family. The child is the fourth born of the six children in the family and is in P3 by this year. Uh, the past surgical, surgical was unremarkable, so that's why I didn't report, except for the blood transfusion in sick people who was uh, transferred. In other words, there was no any other remarkable thing like uh, major fracture, uh, fractures and, and burns. In the summer, I present here 10 year old male admitted as a referral from Bongo Military Hospital uh, with a two month history of uh, low blood fever, which was, uh, low, which was, which was intermittent low grade and associated with tonic chronic uh, conversion for, followed by loss of consciousness. However, there was no history of trauma, uh, plus the lower limb swelling started with the pain on the left, and then later on followed a month later with the swelling which started progressively. Our impression from this case in view of the fever, we had an infectious process, uh, a terminal process, malignancy, then in the view of the overactive uh, chest, uh, we have the heart disease, which in this case we're calling a congenital plus an acquired, which are the acquired, thinking about rheumatic heart disease, infected by endocarditis, and uh, the cardioma. My family not as far fetched, but uh, somebody will try to explain that in detail as we have more questions on that. Uh, the lower limb uh, pain, uh, pain swelling and the pain and the swelling, we, uh, we thought about thrombosis. Stimulitis, hematological disorders, in view of the fact that there was a sickle cell disease history in the family, renal disease, renal disease, and failure, and liver disease. And in view of the coffee, thinking about the abdominal after respiratory tract infection, pneumonia, and in this, for the case of the conversion, we're thinking about hypoxic ischemic sinus event, and then an infectious process, hematological process still.
Thank you so much, Dr. Kidega. I'm Dr. Apollo Moses Bernard. I'm going to take us through the examination findings. Um, on general exam, the child was of school age, a uh, reduced level of consciousness, was a favorite with a 37.2 temperature, with moderate color and tingle tones. There's no edema, no cyanosis. Uh, also not on the general exam was high pressure of the gum with finger clubbing, grade one, and splinter hemorrhoids. And a macular crush around the neck. Um, systemic exam, there are three main systems that were affected. That was the C CNS, CVS, and the respiratory system. Uh, I don't know the system was not affected. So in uh, CNS, the admission PCS was 10 out of 15. I opened it to on 2. Bowel response score on 3. Motor response score on 5. But the, the neck was soft and I signed on the other. In the post admission all round findings, uh, the examiner then noticed tonic, I mean witnessed tonic chronic conversions. And the TCS by that time was 9 out of 15, and the patient was sedated with the abdomen. Uh, I opened him of 3, but all response was 2, and no response was 4. At this time, it's, it, the neck was stiff with generous hypertonia and left side facial nerve palsy, and decreased left side muscle power, hyperreflexia and non-sustained alcoholism, which was by that by the drug. Uh, in CVS, uh, there was a hyperactive pre-polio. Uh, the extremes were bad. Uh, the plenary was less than 2 seconds. Uh, the pulse rate was regular, full volume, uh, with a rate of 119 per minute, and it was non collapsing the beef was 1 by 10 over 70 millimeters of mercury. Had some 1 and 2 we had with a Francis 12 mom. Uh, the mom was best had in the metro area and was radiating to the left axillary region. Respiratory system exam. Uh, the patient did not appear a big respiratory distress. The rate was 20 and SPO2 was 97 on air with equal bilateral air entry and bilateral force vessel gravitations and transmitted breath sounds. Abdominal exam was unremarkable. So at this point, our differentials, uh, we, we mainly looked at rheumatic heart disease with infective enteritis, but then we were looking at other CNS differentials like probably relapses, secondary to arthritis media, uh, most likely meningitis, that could be bacterial or TB meningitis, or anencolitis, or extrapulmonary TB uh, target. Here we we'll also have a on the TB pericarditis, and then we were also thinking maybe there could be a pulmonary TB, but we had to put out malaria. So we were also thinking of malaria as some of Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Doctor. I'm Dr. Benum Chajudi, the intern on Stanfield. I'm going to take you through the management for this patient. So these are some of the investigations that were done. Child was admitted on 11th of August. BS was done, there were no MPC. And MRDT was also done, which was negative. A series of CBCs were done. The first one well, that was done on the 11th of August, the white blood cell count was 10.27. What was elevated was the neutrophils by 8.36, and the HD was also low, 10.22. Then on the one that was done on 12, on 12, the, on, on 12 and, and another one was done, 
we realized that the neutral fields were still high, the HP also still low. Then that was done on 20th, the white blood cell count was 12.08, still the neutral fields now had been elevated to 9.47. On 29th, one that was done now, the HP was coming low, which was 9.98, with the neutral fields, neutral fields coming down to 7.09. The HP now was 9.0. A brain CT scan was done on the next day, that was of 12th of, of August. And also, we noticed what was there was the mild, mild focal cellulitis with associated meningeal enhancing and increased ICP. LFTs and renal function tests were also done. What was, marked, what was elevated was the AST, which was slightly by 44.1. Four, the electrolytes were normal finding went ahead and did on still that day a sputum genex that was done which was also negative next day chest x-ray was done what we noticed there were by by bilateral heterogeneous opacities with a hair and infadema which was suggesting of the images which were suggesting of bronchial pneumonia uh, what was also done was a cardiac echo and also an ECG. ECG were normal findings, but what was significant on the cardiac echo that was done on 30, on 13 was that the mitral mitro uh, effective endocarditis with severe mitral regurgitation and aortic regurgitation, the rheumatic heart disease with severe mitral regurgitation with a mild aortic, that was a repeat that was done of yesterday. We did a great of that field, there are no blast, no target cell. Mm -hmm. That culture was done, three sets of was taken, but no bacterial growth. An LP was done as we noticed that the GCA, the GCA was a less than 18. Assault was also done and the results are there. So some some of the investigations, as we try to see the one on the the one on the the one on the right, or the one, the one on the right, we can see that is a cardio, there is a cardio, a cardio metal, and in the, there is also some, uh, there, there is also some bi bilateral, bi bilateral reticular nodule filtrates which are seen in the mid zone. The one on the, the one on the, the one, the one on the left has a lot of good quality as you can see, but there was some, there was some diagnosis and be done there, which was mostly suggestive of, of a bronchial pneumonia. So this is a brain CT scan that was done. We could notice that in the, there is a hypodense lesion on the left cerebral hemisphere, which was indicative of the cerebrality. So how did we go on with management for this patient? We had the supportive management and the definitive treatment. Whereby the supportive and energy tube was put for feeding to our lead, and that's what to our lead turning in bed and tapping sponging and exposure for the fevers. And also there's urinary catheterization for monitoring, also for the urine output and fluid input and output. There's control of seizures using the unconvers, especially with the diazepam and phenobarbital, and there was daily weight monitoring and physiotherapy. So the definitive management for this patient for the, for the first three days, that was of the 11th of August, and we used the antibiotics, IV cefriaxone, metronidazole and prosacin, and IV manito as the as IC, ICP was elevated for this patient. That was later, child was still spiking fevers, we went to IV metronidazole, maintained the IV metronidazole stick for the 14 days, and also IV acyclovir. For the pain, oral morphine and bisaponin. Current, current child is much better. We are on orals, that is oral cefroxin, oral metronidazole, and uh, oral acyclovir. Thank you.